Good day everyone, welcome to Seagulls TV for our preliminary final team selection video. Of course we're taking on Casey out at Northport Oval at 2.40pm and joining us to take us through the team and the analysis is football manager Chris Dixon. Chris, yeah. thanks for joining us. Uh, seventh straight preliminary final and tenth in 11 years I believe as well. It's a huge achievement for the club. Yeah, it's what, uh, if you have a look at I guess our strategic football plan, it's what we want to achieve each year so we sort of know that to uh, to be in the mix and to be the win one, you, to be, to win the big one, you actually got to get through and give yourself every chance. And I guess that's the best thing about making it through to a pre final weekend. There's no double chances for anyone, and everyone's equal. So you've got four teams with the same chance of winning it, and um, we'll be taking that mindset in this week. Now we'll get to the final shortly, but it'd be remiss of us to not mention uh, the JJ Liston Trophy night held on Monday night. And what a great night it was for the club, not only with Michael Gibbons taking home our first JJ Liston medal in 20 years, but to have five players named to the team of the year is another great achievement for the football club on 2016. Yeah, look, it was a special night. It was great um, recognition for Michael. And it's a really, obviously, as we mentioned, it's a pretty rare treble of, uh, well, an extremely rare treble, the only one who have won the uh, Frank Johnson medal, Norm Goss medal, and now JJ Liston. So all within 12 months for someone who's still only 21, it's a huge achievement. And as you mentioned, to get five guys in the team of the year, <clears throat> and most of any other out of any VFL club for the third year straight, uh, it's great recognition for our players, and as you do with the team of the year, you probably think there probably could be a couple more in there that we would have squeezed in, but um, obviously it's a really quality team and representative of the whole competition. That's great recognition for those five players who have played so well this year. So we'll get into the team, and the team is now appearing on your screen now. What can you tell us about team selection this week? Obviously the development team just went down to Casey last week, but there were some really strong performances. There was, I mean, we sort of had a few guys who were obviously coming to our squad this week, so Jake Riser, Jake Owen, uh, Lachlan Schultz, who were all really impressive, so um, we we're, were pretty healthy overall, um, obviously had a bit of an incident with Billy Myers during the week, so it's uh, unfortunate for him that he, his year's over, but we've got a lot of guys who are really fit and ready to go and putting their hand up for senior selection, so it was tough, as it always is this time of year, but we've just had to look at our opponent and probably have a little bit of a look at the conditions as well to sort of see how we end up on the day. And speaking of our opponents, Casey, you haven't met them since round three. A lot has changed <coughs> since then. Uh, what can we expect out of the minor premiers this week? Uh, as you said, they're the minor premiers for a reason. It's, it's actually hard to probably, certainly in my time here, to think of a team that's probably had more AFL talent and that sort of seniority. Um, I guess you look at some of the names and there's probably a fair chunk of Melbourne salary cap running out on the weekend. I guess you look at guys like Jack Grimes, Trengove, uh, Lyndon Dunn. And then they've got a really up upcoming stars, so obviously Clayton Oliver, Neil Bullen, Sam Wiedemann, Christian Salem, so there's just quality on every line, so we're well aware of the challenge ahead of us. Um, I think it's a, it's a no surprise we'll be going in as big underdogs, but that doesn't phase us, and we know we've got to take it right up to them. Um, they're favourites for a reason, and but we'll be looking to sort of spoil the party and get through another granny. Well, we'd love to see as much support out there as possible on Sunday. Last Saturday was a great turnout by the Seagulls faithful. I think we definitely outnumbered Sandringham and we have another opportunity to, uh, for your, you guys to lend your voices and support once again and help us get over the line. So if you need a lift out to Northport over on Sunday, you can catch our bus which leaves at 1.30pm uh, from Seagulls Nest here at 1 Mason Street in Newport. Uh, $20 cost for the round trip and uh, you can Book yourself in for that by calling 93910309. And Chris, just to finish off, uh, the crowd support was fantastic last week. And obviously, as Michael Gibbons spoke about during the week, it, has, you know, it does give the boys a lift and you'd be hoping for the same and more again this Sunday. Yeah, exactly right. It's a huge Sunday afternoon. So like we said against Sandringham, it was great to see the, our crowds are about number and you could sort of every goal that we kicked and all the support that the boys were getting was huge. and. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty uh, wet weekend, so we'll sort of see what the weather turns out, but it makes it even more important that we've got our, all our supporters and members and parents and the whole bit out there in force cheering us on wearing blue and gold. So it'd be great if we could outnumber all the Casey supporters once again, and I'm sure no doubt it's going to give our boys a bit of a boost. So let's make it a really good day on Sunday, and the boys will be doing everything we can to get the results.